We have a question from Matthew. I've been doing most workouts at home for a while and use kettlebells almost exclusively for weight training. I've been trying to integrate more Olympic style lifts with the kettlebells. Oh, whiffs, huh? And I've been experimenting with the split jerk. So far, I feel like this is beneficial, but I wanted to pick your brains on a few things. Do you have any thoughts on the freedom of movement with going overhead with kettlebell versus a bar? How does that impact shoulder mobility, stability, and strength? Well, that's why I like the shoulder, the, the single arm kettlebell press. A lot of the people I work with, the bulk of the men I work with, have a, a bad shoulder. But the nice thing about the single is that you put all your mind in the one hand, you have two legs, you have one core, you have your whole body supporting that, that you know, that press. So you're, you're using all your mind to have good technique with the one, it's a little bit safer. Uh, if something bad happens, you always have the other hand to help bring it down or pull it back into position. So that would be the big one for me, and that's why I'm such a big fan. Even if uh, I'm working with an Olympic lifter, I don't mind little periods of the year where they do press, 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 press with the single hand uh, uh, kettlebell press because you know you're going to be building some hypertrophy uh, and some. I even say maybe. You're, you're, you're ensuring a healthier joint when you go into those big ballistics overhead. In the split landing, uh, is the split landing worth continuing to work on? I enjoy the athleticism of the dynamic movement, but I wonder if it's effective or necessary with lighter weight. I often think of your dislike of lunges. In what ways might the split landing be different or beneficial? Well, I mean, for a lot of us who are built the way I'm built, um, you know, basically as a thrower, I mean, my split jerk position is my throwing stance. So I've spent so many years in there. I just think it's natural for me. Um, my coach, Dave Turner, has asked me to move to the uh, that push jerk style for me. It's because he thinks that at my last meet, I, I looked at my technique and, you know, he's right. My my split jerk has, has just gone to the dustbin of history and I, I just I don't know where it is if you find it let me know um, is there benefits yeah and then I remember Dick Notmeyer used to have us do with the opposite leg sometimes and it was weird for a while there um, I got stalled doing jerks and then doing the opposite leg very quickly I jerk more with my wrong leg and you go figure um, yeah there's benefits that I, I uh, it, it is a little, and it's pretty simple, but unless you're going to be worried about being the world champion or not, uh, why don't you just stick with the push jerk if, if you have any questions at all, okay? And his last question is, is this a useful exercise for someone squarely within quadrant three and is mostly working out for longevity? Okay, there, now, see, now there's a million dollar question. Uh, if you're doing, uh, if you just want to live for longevity, um, I would prefer you just did your overhead presses. Get your ballistic work with the snatch and get your uh, tonic work, your, your hypertrophy, your power work with the press. Snatch and press. Uh, I feel like, uh, as I said before, you know, little Danny John at age 14 thought the clean and press and the squat snatch is all you ever needed to do as an adult. And uh, that darn kid keeps proving me right. So there's an idea. Thank you.